this is the chapter of electrodynamics uh, for the, especially for the engineering students uh, name of the unit is electrodynamics so before we go into the detail of the electrodynamics and uh, uh, mainly for the Maxwell equation and electromagnetic waves uh, I have to study basically the uh, basic fundamentals of this chapter that comes basically through the four laws that is Gauss law in uh, electrostatics, Gauss law in magnetism, Faraday law and uh, Ampere's law. So in these laws basically uh, we know that uh, electric flux, charge, potential, magnetic field, magnetic flux uh, these are the important uh, scientific words so what is the physical interpretations of these uh, scientific words and other related information uh, that will be beneficial uh, before we go into the detail of this electrodynamic chapter so this is the electro statics and electrodynamics we know that when charge is in a stationary form, they treat under the electrostatics. Uh, basically, a stationary charge, if suppose this charge is in stationary form, and I am saying this is plus Q charge, so it basically a field develops. That field is represented by the sweaters. So a field develops around this positive charge and electric field lines travel start into the space these electric field lines basically ends up to this point that is negative charge Q for an example so up to this point we saw the electric field lines with the help of the arrow which uh, indicate to the, the negative sign so these electric field line basically which starts from the positive charge behaves like a source and ends up to the negative charge that behaves like a sink so these fields basically here nearby to this positive charge and nearby to this negative charge this is an electric field so the properties of these electric fields for an example I want to measure the potential realization of the electric field number of these electric field line in terms of the electric flux so electric field and electric flux and that charge where these electric flux is associated we studied uh, into the electrostatics and what is the electrodynamics in electrodynamics basically when charge starts to move a moving charge basically what this moving charge do this moving charge basically produce a magnetic field moving charge produce a magnetic field so we have to study basically the property of the charge when charge is in a stationary form and when charge is in the moving form so a stationary charge produces the electric field and moving charge produces the magnetic field. So it means there is some connection between the electric field and magnetic field. So we will try to develop that relation between the electric field and the magnetic field. So uh, in the year method to measure the direction and uh, magnitude of these field mathematically we know the electric field uh, we have seen that in case of positive charge this is the electric field lines we are saying these are outward outward in reference to the uh, closed surface suppose we consider a sphere like this one this time we are showing electric field lines outward outward from the positive charge is there any mathematical uh, uh, formulation with which we can say that the electric 
field line direction or we can measure the magnitude of these electric field lines yes that we have some mathematical methodology to measure the direction and the magnitude of this electric field you know that these field lines are not always straight from straight form if suppose we know that these electric field line starts to move into this space if suppose a negative charge is far away from the positive charge then after some distance these straight lines basically becomes into the curved shape now the electric field lines will be into the curved shape so how to measure this curve and this direction so that comes basically into the curl with the help of the curl operator if the electric field lines are straight then we can measure that uh, electric flux at any point with the help of the divergence but if suppose we have to uh, measure such kind of uh, electric flux where we are observing the curvature then we have to use curl operator so here this positive charge basically behaves like a source and the negative charge behaves like a sink so at the emerging point and converging point you can see and observe the field lines difference so what is happening basically at the positive charge electric field lines are emerging and at the negative charge here these electric field lines are converging so how to study the behavior of these electric field lines that these are emerging electric field lines these are uh, converging electric field lines is there any methodology to identify this type of nature of the electric field yes that we can find out with the help of the divergence if the divergence uh, is positive then we say uh, electric field lines is outward if divergence is negative then we say the electric flux basically is inward direction so with the help of the closed surface we can explain the negative and positive divergence but uh, what about the zero because with the help of the divergence now uh, we can measure the magnitude of the electric flux or magnetic flux so uh, the result of the divergence of any vector field function is a scalar quantity that means we are just measuring only the magnitude and magnitude can be zero positive or negative so now we have to see basically the interpretation of this result one by one but before that uh, uh, we have to know about the nature of the field uh, field are of two types one is a scalar field or second is vector field so how to decide the uh, field nature ki this field will be scalar or that field will be vector this basically decided on the basis of physical quantity if the physical quantity is scalar then we say the field will be scalar if the physical quantity is vector we say that field will be vector so for an example if we consider temperature temperature is a scalar quantity but uh, in a room uh, we can measure temperature and temperature will be different at different points so temperature is a function of the a spatial coordinate x y z so t is a function of x y and z so that basically fill that is the fill of the temperature now this fill will treat under the scalar fill concept and vector fill electric fill and magnetic fill both are the vector fields so a field may be scalar and vector it depends on the choice of the physical quantities for an example temperature is a scalar quantity so that field will be scalar and that field is known as the temperature field uh, so here i just try to show the nature of this 
field uh, this is positive charge and in the surrounding of this uh, this dark and then after it becomes light here a uh, dark and it becomes light at this hand so this is the area this is the basically area this is the field of the electric potential around a positive charge uh, if i have a point charge uh, suppose i have a, this point charge here so i realize a force okay it means so uh, where from wherever i start to realize a force that is the area that is the field of that charge so this is a um, field of the potential that is a scalar and on the other hand this is the field this is the electric field of the positive charge here temperature is shown the dark slightly dark light 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 and this is almost white so here the dark portion basically indicate to the high temperature and light one is the lowest temperature so the direction now the question is the direction this is the high temperature and this one is the lowest temperature so this is the field of the temperature this is the field of the potential and darker region basically representing the higher values of the potential or of the temperature here we have considered some basic example to explain the field vector field especially in case of uh, uh, charge electric charge in case of magnetic poles so you can see here this is the positive charge this one is the negative charge and these are the electric field lines and this is the closed surface around this negative charge and positive charge surface is closed and in between of this positive and negative negative charge we have considered here open surface so here we have just try to show uh, potential uh, the divergence of the electric field will be positive divergence of the negative field is sorry divergence of the electric field is negative divergence of e is less than 0 uh, here at this point we are saying that divergence of any vector field and that vector field which we are considering here that is electric field so divergence of the electric field is positive positive why positive because electric field lines electric flux is outward outward we are using this outward in reference to this closed surface here electric flux is inward direction and this inward is in reference to this closed surface so this is the nature of the electric flux electric field here outward here inward so outward basically indicate to the positive divergence here inward flux represent to the negative of the divergence so when we take the divergence of the electric field vector or magnetic field vector basically we are just measuring the magnitude of that field at that particular point so this could be negative this could be positive so what we have to conclude on the basis of this result which we are getting positive negative so positive means key flux is outward and negative means flux is inward direction but we have seen that a result of the divergence of any vector field function might be zero so what is the meaning of zero if suppose divergence of e of any vector field function is equal to zero what will be the meaning of this equation this equation basically the result when we have to explain of this equation for that we have to consider a open surface now keep this open surface in between the positive charge and negative charge so the electric field lines which enter through this open surface surface are equal to the number 
of field lines which are coming out from the other phase. So the total electric flux is equal to 0 which you measure at this point. So divergence of E is equal to 0. At this situation this vector field function is known as solenoidal function. So this is the physical interpretation of the this mathematical equation. When you take the divergence of any vector field function you basically uh, get a result uh, in terms of a magnitude of that field. Uh, that uh, magnitude might be zero, uh, positive or negative. Now the question is what is the physical interpretation of these results? Then in, uh, we can say when the divergence of any electric or magnetic field function is greater than zero, we are measuring the outward flux. When divergence of electric flux or electric field is less than zero we are saying that electric flux or magnetic flux uh, inward nature when divergence of electric or magnetic field function is zero we are saying that total electric flux is zero which we have measured why because the total number of electric field lines which enter through this open surface are equal to the number of lines which are coming out from the other end. But in this situation, this positive charge and here we are considering a sphere and this charge is kept at the center of the sphere. So electric field line basically are coming out. And here at this negative charge, this is again same sphere but at the center we have kept this negative charge. Here all the electric field lines basically are converging at this point. So this is the uh, physical interpretation of the result. We can use this divergence at electric field or at magnetic field. Divergence of B. Here divergence of E. So with the help of divergence we can measure the magnitude and the nature of the field. This electric flux is outward, inward or what type of that. So here this is north pole, this is south pole, these are the magnetic field lines. So we can measure at any point the direction, the nature of the magnetic field lines and the magnitude with the help of this process, mathematical process by taking the divergence of that field. This is an example of hurricane. We will see it into the curve. So now before we uh, go into the detail of the uh, this process how to measure the electric flux and how to measure uh, how to measure the direction and case of when electric field line are straight and when these electric field lines or magnetic lines are in a curved shape so we have three operator three mathematical operator one is the gradient second is the divergence third one is the a curl. So first mathematical operator which we have which we have to use that is gradient. Second is the divergence and third one is the curl. These are mathematical operators. And we have two fields is scalar field and vector field. These are two fields. So what we have to do basically we have to operate these uh, operators on these field functions. These field uh, scalar field and vector field basically we will treat these field like a function f x. So as we have seen earlier that we were saying temperature is a scalar quantity. So temperature basically is a physical quantity that develop a field that is known as a scalar field and t temperature is a function of a special coordinate t x y and z. 
so at every point basically in space temperature will be different so here t is a function of spatial coordinate x y and z so second point is the electric field and magnetic field these are vector field so t is a scalar field electric and magnetic field are vector fields these are the operators now what we have to do basically first we have to develop mathematical formulation a mathematical development to study the electrodynamics so for that purpose we have these operators we have these fields and we will treat these fields like a function so we have to operate these gradient divergence curl operators on the field function so gradient uh, the first point is gradient operator always operates on the scalar field function gradient operates on the scalar field function divergence and curl operates these two operators operates on the vector field function so how to write uh, gradient this is the gradient operator the way of writing gradient of t so this gradient operator operate on the scalar field function that is temperature x y z this is the way of writing you can write this in this form del operator with the help of del operator del t where del this del operator indicate the expansion of this del operator is del upon del x i plus del upon del y j plus del upon del z k this is the expansion of the gradient operator when this gradient operator operates on this temperature field function which is a scalar quantity it basically provide a vector quantity so when del operator the del operator on this t which is a, again a function of x y z so it becomes del t is equal to del upon del x t i plus del t upon del y j plus del t upon del z k so if you write t here this is t this is your gradient operator del operator and this one is the t so t will be here 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 so d del t upon del x i plus del t upon del y j plus del t upon del z k so this is the variation into the temperature component along the x direction this is the variation along the y direction into the temperature and this is the variation into the temperature along the z direction so this del operator when operates on a scalar field function it provide basically a vector field function along the i direction along the j direction and along the k direction so now this result is basically a vector field function and through this del t upon del x we can find out the magnet uh, we can find out the magnitude and with the help of this i j k we can find out the direction so what will be the direction in case when we take the gradient of any scalar field function the direction will basically towards the maximum change maximum change is occurring towards the i temperature so this will be the result of this gradient operator about the direction no uh, no next point is related to the a gradient as we, i told you earlier that gradient of a scalar field is a vector field which points in the direction of the greatest rate of increase of the scalar field and whose magnitude is the greatest rate of change that change basically towards the high darker side 
so this is in a best example to explain the gradient uh, the direction here in case of the potential so he has taken the gradient of this potential the direction basically is indicating to the maximum change maximum change toward that the center here maximum change is towards the higher temperature so in the about two images the scalar field is in black and white black representing higher values and its corresponding gradient is represented by these arrows Note it, phi is a scalar field function and when you take the gradient of it the way of writing is this del phi upon del xi plus del phi upon del yj plus del phi upon del zk even though phi is a scalar the gradient of phi is a vector quantity uh, the expression of gradient phi can be written as in this way gradient phi this way expansion del phi this del phi where this del is basically is correspond to this one is a card del operator or nebula so this was the meaning of the uh, gradient operator when gradient operator operates on the scalar field function next is the divergence operator divergence and curl operator as i told you earlier that operates on the vector field function so this uh, divergence of a vector field what is the meaning of this when you take the divergence of a field what basically information you are collecting from that uh, we have discussed earlier that when we take the divergence of any vector field we just are measuring the direction and the nature of the field we are just measuring sorry not direction the magnitude of the field and the nature of the field divergence is an operator that measures the magnitude of a vector field source or sink at a given point the divergence of a vector field is a scalar and at a point it is defined as the amount of flux diverging from a unit volume element per second around that point it is a scalar product of del operator with a vector field function when you take the divergence of vector field function basically you are getting a scalar result scalar means only magnitude